few years, I think, to put it lightly. You know, Mrs. Dixon says that I kept students out longer than any other state. That's just not true. I worked closely with my Republican and Democratic governors, and kids were out for three months. Um, the fact of the matter is, education is what levels the playing field for people, and we've underinvested in it for decades. We got the biggest investment in public education done in a bipartisan way to support teachers, to bring down class sizes, to wrap our kids with supports like mental health supports, tutors and literacy coaches, making class sizes smaller. This is how we improve outcomes. But it's only been a couple years and we've had a pandemic to navigate. The reason kids were out of school during the pandemic was because we were working off of knowledge from 1918 when kids died from the last global pandemic. As a mom, all I was thinking about was saving the lives of our kids. Ms. Dixon, you have a rebuttal? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just heard an audible gasp around town when Gretchen Whitmer said that kids were out of school for three months. Perhaps she wasn't paying attention to what was actually happening. Even We even had schools that were closed this year. This is shocking to me that she thinks that schools were only closed for three months, or maybe she thinks she can convince you that schools were only closed for three months, but you know better because your students are the ones that are desperately behind. And the test scores show that she's being dishonest about this. She's being dishonest about even trying to get into these schools to get these schools back on track? Governor. Well, that's just not true. But what I will say is we have made a historic investment. And that's precisely how we laid the groundwork to get to Michigan being a top 10 state for literacy. That is the goal that we all have to get behind. The problem is, if Mrs. Dixon is elected, she and her biggest funder, Betsy DeVos, will be writing the education budget. And their plan is to take half a billion dollars out of our public school system. You want to get kids to top 10 literacy, draining the school aid fund of resources is not going to get us there. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Chuck. So candidates, we continue to see violence in our schools. Just this week, the alleged Oxford shooter pled guilty. And we've heard talk of hardening our schools. So what does that mean to you? And can you describe what it will look like in practice? Governor Whitmer, we'll start with you. Well, listen, I got to tell you, as a former prosecutor who ran um, exercises with our police departments for active shooter, it's horrible to see what happened in Oxford and what plays out in this country every single day. As a mom, I am furious that in this country and only this country, guns are the number one killer of our children. I support secure storage. I support red flag laws. I support background checks. When Mrs. Dixon was asked, do you support secure storage, which was what Oxford families were asking for, she said, I don't know what it is. She supports more guns in schools, making them not gun-free zones. Her plans are downright dangerous. In the same month that the Oxford shooting happened, she posted a picture of herself with a gun and the caption saying, gun control means using both hands. She might think this is a joke, but I think there's nothing funny about it. Thank you, Governor. Mrs. Dixon. How manipulative to comment on a post that I made 29 days before the shooting even occurred, but that's what we expect when we talk to Gretchen Whitmer, right? Let me be clear about something. What's happening in our schools when we have a school shooting is devastating. I have four daughters that are in school, school-aged daughters that I am concerned about every single day. Our state police came out with a, a safe schools plan in 2018 to harden our schools. You asked what that looks like. I would like to have armed security at our schools. I would like to make sure that we have a one entry point. I would also like to implement some of that plan that talks about how to identify a child that struggles with mental health that might be considering self-harm or harming someone else. This is something that we just heard the Department of Ed say that they wouldn't even tell parents about, and Gretchen Whitmer has been silent. We need an office of safe schools, like states like Florida have, to make sure that this is a top priority. And if we had implemented the 2018 report from the state police, we might have saved lives. Governor? There was a school shooting in Missouri yesterday in a district that had exactly what she just described, one place of entry, armed guards in the school district and people are dead. We've been trying that for 30 years. It's not working. It is time to try proven policies, background checks, secure storage, red flag laws. I'm not talking about hunting. I'm just trying to keep our kids and communities safe. 
Ask yourself, who's going to keep your kids safe? The former prosecutor with plans or the candidate with thoughts and prayers? Mrs. Dixon? And yet she's been governor for four years. In fact, she's been a career politician for 20, and she hasn't seemed to come up with an answer for this yet. She's, her, her concern is taking guns away from law-abiding citizens. I want to make sure that our kids are safe. I don't want our kids in a sitting duck zone where the only person that has a weapon is the shooter that is going in to take their lives. I want to make sure we are as safe as possible in the state of Michigan. And as a mom, I think you can rely on me to make sure it happens. Thank you both. Doug? All right, let's talk about libraries, if we could, school and public. We've had a lot of efforts across the state, across the nation for that matter, uh, to ban access to certain books, again, at public and school libraries, a lot of them having to do with titles, including LGBTQ issues, the Holocaust, et cetera. Uh, as governor, how do you make sure that kids have access to that inclusive literature who might be seeking it, while also making sure the parents and teachers feel heard on the issue, and I'll add that this has real-life implications. We've had millages fail, and in my hometown of Grand Rapids, uh, we've had libraries say that they are in danger of closing because people are voting against millages based on these issues. So again, uh, I would ask you, uh, Mrs. Dixon, what do you do as governor? How do you handle this? Yeah, the, what I've heard from parents across the state is inappropriate content in school libraries. That's the biggest concern that I'm hearing about. And we're talking about sexual content. We're talking about pornography in schools. Parents have risen up across the state. They've asked Gretchen Whitmer to comment, and she's been silent on this issue. So I'm anxious to hear what she has to say. If you have material in your school that is something that you can't read to a child at a bus stop because you would be arrested because it is pornographic, then it should not be in our classrooms. What these parents are talking about are not textbooks that will help children learn about themselves. These are books that are describing to children how to have sex, and parents are outraged about it across the state. I stand with those parents that want to make sure we go back to the basics of reading, writing, and math in our schools. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. Governor? Yes, so let me start with this. As a public school parent, I know that we have rights to understand the curriculum, the materials, to opt our children out if we think that it doesn't keep in line with our, our desires in terms of what they are learning. Also, parents can attend parent-teacher conferences, take part in the debate that is happening, and these are happening at the local level, where they should be, so that parents can be involved. We also have a duty to make sure that all children feel accepted and safe and can learn and play when they are in school. I reject the false choice that it has to be one or the other. But I'll also tell you this, is with a really heavy heart that I see politicians try to wedge communities against one another. It is dangerous and it is selfish. Mrs. Dixon hosted someone on her show that said Martin Luther King Jr. shouldn't be in our history books. This is what we're talking about. We need to bring down the temperature and solve the problems to make sure parents are involved and students feel comfortable and we're giving them a robust education. 30 seconds, Mrs. Dixon. Well, I guess we, we've received the answer now that she is not going to stand with parents on this issue who are crying out across the state. In fact, I had a gentleman come up to me just a few nights ago and he said, I found content in my school library describing how to have sex to my son. I went to the Democrats and I said, I cannot believe that this is in there. And they said, you are no longer a part of our party. He said, just a few weeks ago, not only was I a Democrat, but I was running for office as a Democrat. He said, because Democrats won't stand up for our children and go back to the basics, I'm leaving the Democrat party. Governor? Do you really think books are more dangerous than guns? Like, do you really think that books pose a greater danger to our kids than gun violence does? Mrs. Dixon is trying to distract us. She's trying to divert attention from the fact that she's bankrolled by Betsy DeVos. She has endorsed Betsy DeVos's plan to drain half a billion dollars out of our public schools, and that's why she's waging these, these fights. We have to protect our kids. Chuck. All right. Governor, four years ago, uh, you won election mainly because of a phrase that you used that said, fix the damn roads. We know that there's construction going on because everywhere we go, we see orange barrels. My question is, are we building better roads or are we just putting band-aids on a cancerous infrastructure? 
Oh, well, you know, I love talking about the roads. The reason I focus on the roads is because when you have a busted rim, it can be money out of rent. It can be money out of child care. And that's why fixing the damn roads has been so important. Let's be clear. We are addressing decades of disinvestment. We've already rebuilt 13,000 lane miles, 900 bridges. There are orange cones and barrels all over the state because we are fixing the roads. The fact of the matter is, this is a huge issue for our economy, our personal safety. It is so crucial that we continue this work, but it's all in jeopardy. As we think about what's Michigan gonna look like four, eight, 12 years down the road, we have to have solid infrastructure. But with plans to cut $12 billion out of the general fund and no plan to replace it, that will set us back in terms of rebuilding infrastructure back to decades of disinvestment. It'll mean money out of public safety and out of our kids' education. We can't afford to have that kind of leadership. Governor, really, very quick follow-up. Yes or no, are we using better materials? We are, we're using the right mix and materials. And as you can see, when you're driving by, we're taking the roads all the way down to gravel and rebuilding them. They're built to last. It's not just papering over like, unfortunately, has been done for years in the state prior to me taking office. All right. Mrs. Dixon, if elected the next governor of this state, will you continue what we see going on with the construction of our roads, or will you change the process in any way, shape, or form? We will work to make sure that there actually is a plan for the roads. She stood on the debate stage four years ago and said she had a plan, but let's remember there was no plan. The plan was to raise the gas tax by 45 cents a gallon, and you would be paying $5 a gallon for gas right now. That obviously didn't work. And then when she was given road funding by the legislature because she didn't get her gas tax increase, she vetoed it. She had a lot of vetoes at that time, also vetoed autism funding for families. This was a tantrum because she didn't get her road funding. We want to make sure that it is a priority. And think about this. If it were a priority back then when she stood on this debate stage, in the four years that the budget increased by nearly $20 billion, you would have thought that she would be able to find road funding in that time to actually fix the roads instead of just throwing a bunch of orange barrels out before the next election. Governor, your rebuttal. So listen, I'm not even gonna to respond to all of that. I'm gonna tell you this. We are gonna to continue to fix the, fix the dam roads, rebuilding this state. What's up next is Miller Road Bridge. What's up next is Mound Road, 696, 275. These are important arteries in this part of the state that you will see work being done. We need to continue this. It doesn't end. Unfortunately, we have to continue to rebuild infrastructure, but we're making headway and we gotta put our foot on the gas. Ms. Dixon. People are wondering when the road from their house to work will be fixed. When will that be a priority? Because it's absolutely true that a broken rim is devastating. I know because I had one this year. In fact, I've had five flat tires on these roads. They are a total disaster and they're costing the people of Michigan $5,000 a year in road repairs. So if this is how she fixes the roads, well, I guess we can look back at her other promises too. What were they? Transparency, clean water, fixing the roads, failures. Yeah. All right, in this same infrastructure vein, starting with you, Mrs. Dixon, I'm curious, how will you improve internet infrastructure and access, especially up in the UP? I hope to hear a concrete plan. Yeah, it's critical for us to work with our private sector to expand these projects across the state of Michigan. And in fact, once we do that, we will see the economic development that we so desperately need. Right now, not only are our children suffering because we don't have broadband, especially during a time when they were kept at home for online learning, which is why so many of our kids are so far behind, but even our farmers are suffering because they don't have access to broadband. So I will partner with our broadband companies and talk to them about how they can expand. In fact, one of the great things about the tunnel that will be built for Line 5 is that we can also run broadband access through that tunnel and make sure that we can expand our access into the Upper Peninsula. And I will make sure to take advantage of that tunnel that will be gifted to the state of Michigan. Governor? I gotta tell you, I am so grateful that the Chamber of Commerce, Com sorry, Commerce for Northern Michigan has endorsed my candidacy. This is because we've been working closely to make sure that we created an Office of Rural Development. We created an office specifically about increasing broadband access. 23,000 homes have already been added online. Now, 
What we can afford is someone who's going to take political pot shots instead of roll up their sleeves and solve problems. When the Infrastructure and Jobs Act passed, Mrs. Dixon called it fake. She, she snubbed her nose at it because she doesn't like the guy in the White House. We need a governor who's not going to score political points but roll up their sleeves and get things done. $10 billion is coming into Michigan. We are going to deploy those resources to make sure that we get everyone connected. We're making progress and there's more good work to do, but we got to continue the work and not play political games. I will fight for every dime to come into the state of Michigan so I can make your life better. Mrs. Dixon? You should be careful of where all of your dimes go if Gretchen Whitmer is in charge because she just offered $715 million of your taxpayer dollars to a Chinese corporation to come to the state of Michigan. So she can tell you all she wants that she is improving economic development and keeping automotive jobs here. But we're hearing that battery plants are going outside of Michigan unless they're owned by the Chinese and have strong ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Your taxpayer dollars are not safe with Gretchen Whitmer. Governor? There was a lot, a lot to take in on that one. I'll say this. We are making historic progress when it comes to economic development. Whether it's Goshen that is changing big rapids and building long range batteries, or our next energy, or Magna that we announced today. Mrs. Dixon has worked against economic development incentives that I worked in a bipartisan way to get done. If she was governor, none of those projects would be happening. We cannot unilaterally disarm and think we're going to build an economy of the future. We have to run fast and win. Thank you both. Doug? You know, we got uh, another question that we got quite a bit of uh, submissions on uh, was on no-fault auto insurance. Uh, people like Maureen Howell, whose son was involved in a catastrophic crash, wanted to know what exactly would be done to help these 18,000 survivors, Governor? Uh, of course, you know, those benefits were taken away during your administration. So how do we provide access to care for these folks? So let me start with this. Um, Michigan has had historically the highest insurance rates in the country. I worked with the Republicans in the legislature to give Michigan residents some, cons some choices, give consumers the ability to pick what level of insurance they want, like happens in other states. Now people can make that choice, and we've seen rates come down, and uh, we also know that this has helped drivers drive insured, where people weren't buying the insurance previously. There also is a group of people who have been injured, especially those pre this law, who we need to ensure get the care they contracted for at the rate so that they can actually get those services. There's been a lawsuit. We know that this case is still in front of the court, but I've been trying to reach out to the legislature to help make sure that we address those rates and ensure that rates are being paid on time. And Mrs. Dixon, if you are elected, these folks would be looking to you for this help. What would you do? I agree that we had insurance rates that were way too high and that we had people in Detroit that couldn't even get insurance for their car and they were paying thousands of dollars just to drive every month. That was devastating. Sometimes legislation has unintended consequences. We've seen that with this legislation. In fact, the governor knew that there was going to be a lawsuit when she decided to give away the catastrophic injury fund and give five, $400 checks back to everybody in Michigan, even though these people were desperate to find out how they would continue to get care. Now that the lawsuit has gone through, you're going to get a bill for $48 because she gave you those checks just a little too soon. And we have to make sure we take care of those people who had that contract to make sure their lives are the same quality as they were before. Governor? Mrs. Dixon is showing you how ill-prepared she is for this job. The governor doesn't decide for the Michigan Catastrophic Claims Association what the checks are going to be. Mrs. Dixon. I'm glad she admitted that because her commercials are constantly saying that she gave $400 checks back to everyone. So I'm glad she's admitting that those checks didn't come from her and she actually isn't putting money back into the pockets of the Michigan people. Thank you both. Okay. Mrs. Dixon, next question goes to you. I'm going to try to take this in a slightly different direction and, and perhaps you might not need rebuttals on this. Uh, in the interest of civility and certainly something that Governor Milligan, the longest serving governor of this state, talked about. I want to ask you to encourage the best and the brightest to enter the field of public service. What can you say positive about your opponent and 
the political party that she represents. My opponent always talks about her daughters. And as a mom of girls, I think that's so important to come out and encourage your daughters and love your daughters. She has also made sure she's fought for women, and I love that about her. I think that we can continue to continue that tradition and make sure we take care of women and make sure women are protected in the state. It's so important. All right. Governor, same question. I would have said something very similar, actually. I know how hard it is to run for office and to raise kids. And so my hat's off to anyone who's willing to do it. I think moms' voices are important. We obviously have very different perspectives. All moms are not the same. But I appreciate how difficult it is and applaud any woman who is willing to put their, herself out there and at the same time balance all of the different pressures that we working moms have. All right. Would you like a rebuttal? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. All right. Elle? All right. Changing gears a little bit. So we had one epidemic that was sort of eclipsed by the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm curious how you'll address the opioid crisis here in Michigan. So starting with Governor Whitmer, how can you address the influx of fentanyl with the ongoing opioid crisis here in our state? Well, let me start with this. You know, I often talk about my own mother who died of brain cancer right after my first daughter was born. I was in that sandwich generation where I was taking care of two different generations of my family. And I know how hard that was. And that's why I've worked so hard to expand access to health care. I worked with my predecessor, Rick Snyder. When I was in the Senate, we got Medicaid expansion done. And today, a million more people have health care because of that work. There is no question that we have got an opioid crisis in this country. It was a greedy pharmaceutical company that buffaloed the people of this country and has created a lot of addicts. That's why the resources that we are putting into um, addiction treatment, the resources that we are putting into ensuring more people have access to health care is so incredibly important. This is a space where we've got more good work to do, but we are making progress. Mrs. Dixon? Well, we've seen a massive increase in overdoses. 2021 was the highest number we've ever seen. And we can directly correlate this to the Whitmer Biden policies of having an open border. We know that drugs are pouring across our border every day. We've seen overdoses rise since this administration took office. It's been devastating. And that's why I've presented my safe state plan to put a billion new dollars into policing to make sure we have enough police on the streets. I just went to the Oakland County Crime Lab the other day. The woman there was testing a giant, two giant blocks of cocaine, and then she pulled out one of fentanyl. I said, where did that come from? And she told me it had come from just down the street in Pontiac at a house. I asked her how many people that fentanyl could kill, and she said millions. If we had more officers on the streets, we could be preventing a lot more overdose deaths. I want to make sure that we have the backs of our cops and we invest in our cops and we make sure that they have what they need to fight this horrible scourge on our country. Governor Whitmer, if you'd like a rebuttal, I'm also curious if you'd expand things like access to Narcan or anything else to address the problem tomorrow. Absolutely. So I think one of the big things that we haven't yet talked about but need to is about crime. We know that our police put their lives on the line every single day. I, as governor, have made too many phone calls, attended too many funerals. And that's why I have delivered over a billion dollars more for law enforcement in Michigan to recruit, to train, to make sure they've got the wraparound support so that they can do their job. It is a hard job. But this is, I think, one of the most important things that we haven't really yet talked about. Thank you, Governor. Mrs. Dixon, Narcan? Narcan is obviously very important. And we have seen that we have our Walmart pharmacies that distribute it a few times a year, and it's also our police officers have it around the state. But I think it's very important to note that it's not just about going out and having cops on the street. It's also about taking care of our corrections officers and making sure that when someone commits a crime, that we get those drug dealers off the streets and they can't commit more crimes and cause more death in the state of Michigan. Thank you both. So this is our last question. I have to read it very quickly. Um, last week, the CDC recommended adding COVID-19 vaccines to the recommended immunization schedule uh, for both children and adults next year. Got to be very adamant about this. This is not a mandate. This was a recommendation. This happens every single year. So as governor of Michigan, 
do you take them up on that recommendation and make sure that the COVID-19 vaccination be required for school attendance, Mrs. Dixon? Yeah, I want to be very clear about this. This is a parent's decision. There will never be a mandate for the COVID-19 vaccine for children to go to school in a Dixon administration. I'm anxious to hear what Gretchen Whitmer has to say because she was forcing the vaccine on people. You remember her program, Vax to Normal? You could only get your liberties and freedoms back if you got your neighbor vaccinated. She will likely push this on your children. I want you to know that I will never push the COVID-19 vaccine on your children. That is your choice, and it will always be your choice as long as I am your governor. Governor Wimmer. No, I do not support requiring the COVID vaccine for children. But let's talk about COVID. It hit our state hard. It hit this community incredibly hard. We had hospitals that were full. We had morgues that were full. We had refrigerated trucks outside of hospitals because we didn't even have enough masks for our doctors and didn't have a place to put deceased people. We made quick decisions to save lives and studies show we saved thousands. I am proud of that. But while I was getting death threats, saving lives during COVID, my opponent was sowing conspiracy theories. She was saying that kids couldn't get impacted, no need for masks. She even said vaccines carried the mark of the beast in government trackers. It's that kind of foolishness that actually endangers people. If she had been governor during COVID, thousands more people would have died. Mrs. Dixon? If that were at all true, why would I have gotten the vaccine myself? The governor is being dishonest once again, but that's what you do when you don't have policies to run on, when you killed more seniors than almost any other state, when you were told to stop the policy, but you kept it going, when you could, had such extreme unemployment fraud that you lost eight and a half billion dollars worth of taxpayer money. She crushed our economy. 3,000 businesses, 3,000 restaurants died under Gretchen Whitmer and never came back. She kept our kids out of school. Mrs. And Dixon, I'm sorry I have to intense. keep us on time. Thank you. One more rebuttal from you, Governor. I think you know what our priorities are. Her, hers would have been the bottom line. Mine were children. Mine were seniors. Mine was protecting people. As soon as vaccines became available, I deployed the Michigan National Guard to work with our nursing homes to make sure that if seniors wanted the vaccine that they got it and COVID rates plummeted. Had she been governor during that same time, thousands more nursing home re uh, residents would have passed away. Thank right. you both. Thank you, Doc. Uh, candidates, it's now time for your closing statements. We promised you beforehand that we would reserve 90 seconds each for you all to be able to do that. Uh, according to the agreement and the draw that we had before. Governor Whitmer, you go first, and Mrs. Dixon, you get the final word. Well, that was fast, and thank you for participating. You know, as I think about the next four years and our future, I can't help but think of my own kids and all the young people in their generation. They're gonna be making decisions about where to build their lives, and I sure hope it's in Michigan. In a second term, I will stay focused on building a Michigan where every person can get a good paying job, with a secure retirement, send their kids to great schools with great teachers, know that they're gonna be safe in their community, free from discrimination and hate, and make their own decisions about their bodies. This is an important election. My opponent has shown tonight that she's more interested in dividing us, halting our progress, and dragging us backwards. When she's not scripted and on stage, she stokes violence, spreads conspiracy theories, even attacks working women and teachers. You know, we need to come together and solve problems. As governor for, you know, four more years, I hope to have the opportunity to continue this service and I will always put your interests first. I wanna thank all the Republicans and independents who have supported me. I wanna thank all the police organizations and business groups that have endorsed me, and of course, my longtime supporters. I say, let's continue to move our state forward, build a brighter future for future generations. This is a great state, and our future is bright. Asking for your vote. Okay. Mrs. Dixon, your closing statement. Like many of you, I had children out of school for several years. Like many of you, I had a small business crushed, and like many of you, I lost a loved one. Gretchen Whitmer doesn't want to be defined by her carelessness, her dishonesty, or her hypocrisy during that time. But even if we didn't look at that, 
we would look at her governorship as a disappointment. Her radical policies have crushed the state. Her choices have been destructive. But don't worry, there is another choice. Michigan, you're not better off four year, now than you were four years ago. In fact, we're in the top 10 for crime in the nation. We're in the bottom 10 for reading and math in the nation. We lost 82,000 jobs and we lost more small businesses than any other state. Gretchen Whitmer will stand on the stage tonight and tell you that's success. But you've all felt the pain of her failure and you deserve better. If you choose me as your governor, I will put cops over criminals. I will put parents over politics. I will put students over systems. And I will make sure that we put money back into your pocket and we do a better job with the money that we have. I'll bring it back common sense and I will make sure that we have better schools, more jobs, safer communities, and reliable roads. I want to be your governor and I want to bring back a family-friendly Michigan. I ask for your vote on November 8th and I promise to serve you well. God bless you. Governor, Mrs. Dixon, thank you so much for coming in, for engaging in not one, but two statewide debates, the last one being today, and facing the voters. This is very important before they go in and make their final decisions on election day. We also want to thank our partners at Oakland University for being wonderful hosts here and all that we've put them through. They've been good sport and we appreciate it. And I want to thank uh, my fellow panelists, El and Doug, thank you so much from Grand Rapids and the city of Lansing in the middle of our state. And we want to thank all of you at home for joining us. Don't forget to vote on election day, Tuesday, November the 